Okay, so we're happy? Mm -hmm. You happy, Nathan? I'm happy. <laughs> okay. All righty. Nathan, how long have you been a member of the church? I joined in May 88, so 17 years. What does the church mean to you? Um, the church uh, gives me uh, an avenue to express my faith as a Christian. We believe that as Christians, you know, um, your fellowship with other believers is, is, is an important part of, of, of how you express your Christianity with other believers. So I grew up in that church. Um, I'm married in that church. I'm now raising my family in that church. And why particularly Assemblies of God? What does it have to offer? Um, I've never gone church shopping. I've always grown up in the one church. But for me, I like its, its, its relevance to people. It isn't uh, old and dusty. It's contemporary. It meets people where they're at. It uh, does excellent work in the community and uh, has a vision that I support. And can, can you conceive of your life outside of that church? Um, only in the sense that I can't conceive of my life outside being a Christian. I mean, there are other churches, but I believe strongly that God has placed me in my church and I'm not going anywhere unless I feel called elsewhere. In the lead-up to the last election, it was said that family first, despite claims to the contrary, was directly linked to the Assemblies of God. Was that true? Um, family first have admittedly had their genesis in the Assemblies of God church and are trying hard, I hope, to disentangle themselves from that genesis. There were um, associations and, and things that occurred in the church that gave me cause for concern, yes. What kinds of things? Well, for example, uh, the, the fact that uh, on the one hand Family First seemed to be so keen to deny that there were any links whatsoever, and yet it was patently obvious that they were, they were drawing the majority of their candidature, their support, uh, their financing from Assemblies of God or, or church-related networks, not formally but, but informally. Do you know if there was any from the pulpit support in AOG churches for Family First candidates? The thing that gave me the most concern, I suppose, was there was always this patina of we can't tell you how to vote, but that was always followed by actions that were uh, contrary to that, that statement. So, um, you know, uh, ministers of religion, the pastors of churches standing as the candidate um, drawing in uh, parishioners with no interest in politics or church staff to stand as dummy candidates in other seats to bolster the campaign of, a, of another person. Why do you say dummy candidates? Because Family First said in their own press releases that the majority of their candidates were local and yet there were ten people from my own church, including five paid staff, who were... Um, who were standing in seats as far away as Cessnock and, and, and uh, Bathurst, uh, who had absolutely nothing to do with the areas that they were purportedly seeking to represent. So what was the purpose of standing dummy candidates? The party was up front about it. I mean, they said, we want to stand as many lower house candidates as we can to support the campaign of our Senate candidates, which is where we have you know, the, our only real chance. So you're saying they stood those candidates in order to successfully play the preference trading game? Yes, and in as much as that they were up front about that, that was, that was above board. I just didn't think that it was ethical to do so. So you're saying that there was support from in Assemblies of God churches for Family First candidates? I think that the church was profoundly double-minded about this, and I think there were misgivings at a number of levels. On the one hand, there was a genuine desire to keep themselves at arm's length and to convey that message to people that, you know, we can't tell you how to vote. But if it was followed by preferential airtime for a particular party or allowing parties like Family First to take the service for 15 minutes for the purpose of um, getting supporters, booth workers, uh, membership, fundraising, then that preferential treatment... You couldn't sustain the claim that the church was keeping itself at arm's length when those kinds of things were happening. And you know that that happened in Assemblies of God churches, that Family First candidates were given preferential treatment? Uh, I can't say that it happened in my church, but I've read instances of it happening in other churches. And why do you believe that Family First was so intent on claiming that there was no connection whatsoever? because they wanted to find a, a broader base for their appeal. If they were seen as a 
solely church-based party, then they would only have the same demographic as the Christian Democrats. And I think it's an attempt to, to try and establish themselves as a mainstream party. So far, they haven't done a very good job. But one of the uh, Senate candidates went so far as to say that suggesting that there was a connection was very close to slander, I think, were his words. I, I know, and this is an example of the double-mindedness that uh, I found troubling, that, uh, that they would be so keen to deny the church connection as that they actually stepped over a line and, and, and brought scorn upon themselves. What, what, in essence, is your problem with this? Family First has family values, which presumably reflect the beliefs of the AOG. Why shouldn't there be a connection? Because there is a question of church and state that people have largely forgotten about. I mean, the Australian Constitution has an establishment clause concerning an official church, just like the American Constitution does. But beyond that, Australia has inherited a lot of historical ambiguities in terms of the relationship between church and state, whether it was state aid for schools, uh, for religious schools in the, in the 1960s or now the growing role of faith-based organisations in the provision of welfare and employment services. It's an open-ended question and debate will go on into perpetuity. It's a question of spiritual headship. In the church, we, in, we make a personal investment in our ministers and they, they deserve a degree of qualified deference in terms of the fact that God has put them there. But as soon as they wander into the political sphere, they need to understand that it's fair game, and they can't take this mantle of spiritual headship into the political sphere. And unfortunately, they haven't made that distinction. But, but what, in essence, is wrong with it? If the political party supports the position of the church itself, why shouldn't it go out there? Because people that go to those churches and hold a different political flavour end up feeling uncomfortable. And if they vote left of centre, for example, there's a, there's a, a danger that, that people will think less of their Christianity. Did that happen, to your knowledge, within the church? I believe it has. Were people who were not inclined to vote for Family First were made to feel less of a Christian? Um, I don't know. I, I, there was never any intent for people to, to kind of feel that way. I'm not saying that anybody looked down their nose at those people, but those people would have to ask questions about whether it was still their church when the church was taking such an overtly political stand and at one end of the political spectrum. I can't agree with that. Do, do you think that members of the church in the lead-up to the election felt pressured in some way to vote for Family First? Uh, I think that the, the preferential airtime and the fact that... Uh, when you say airtime, that is speaking to you know, congregations. Spe speaking to... to congregations and so forth. I mean, uh, you know, church newsletters that were circulated to every pastor in New South Wales and Queensland that I'm aware of uh, specifically pushed Family First and the fact that Assemblies of God people were standing as candidates... Um, in, in, in aid of their candidature. And I think uh, that, that creates a sense of obligation that, that, you know, people shouldn't have upon them. So if you were a member of an Assemblies of God church before the last election, you would have had the strong impression that your church was supporting Family First? That would have varied depending on which church you attend and how they handled that particular issue. I'm sure it varied from church to church. But I'm sure that in some churches you could have felt rather uncomfortable that you were being goaded in a certain direction. You are taking the step of speaking out about this issue. You are clearly a loyal, devoted member of your church, but you feel strongly about it. Do you think there may be repercussions for you in this? Definitely. I mean, I hope not, but uh, it, it, it won't make life any easier for me. How do you think it's going to make it difficult? I'm not going to answer that question. Has, has your feeling about this altered the way you think about your own church? It does put your faith in a crucible and it forces you to think about why you support your church or why you support your leaders. But uh, my faith as a Christian is rock solid. I mean, it's crystallised some things for me, but uh, I'm not going anywhere as a result of it. And have you spoken to your fellow members of the church about your concerns about the church's entry into politics? 
I, I've spoken publicly about my point of view on a website that I maintain, but beyond that, it's not my position. It's, it's not my intention to stir dissent in any way because that would be disloyal. Do you have a feeling that uh, other members of your congregation or other members of the Assemblies of God have similar concerns? Yes, definitely. Because you've spoken to people with similar concerns? Because people have approached me saying, I agree with what you've said, and I'm glad it's your neck on the block and not mine, and, uh, you know, um, we'll, see where, we'll see if any change results. And is there, do you think, any potential damage to the church in this... Involvement. Yes. I believe the integrity of the political process and the integrity of the church are both damaged when the entanglements between church and politics become too enmeshed. Uh, there needs to be uh, a, a greater attempt at keeping them at arm's reach. And if Family First can leave the orbit of the church where they found their genesis, they can achieve that. They've either got a bright future or they're heading for oblivion over precisely that issue. How sophisticated a party do you think Family First is today? Uh, well resourced, well funded, well organised, still starting out. Uh, that's why I say they've got either a bright future or they're heading for oblivion because, uh, you know, the, the churches, the charismatic churches particularly, are very well organised. They're very corporate. Do you think that the AOG, the Assemblies of God, realise that there is a downside to this kind of political involvement? I think in the fallout from the last election, there's had to have been some soul-searching, but how that manifests itself, will, we will only see in future elections, state and federal. And, and why shouldn't um, AOG churches and Family First be patting themselves on the back? They, after all, have a new senator. They do, and rather unexpectedly. Um, you know, they, they, they won that success and they're entitled to whatever degree of self-congratulation they want. And, and how do you, I mean, how do you think if you look back on, or if you look at the coming political term, how do you think Family First will conduct itself in, in the Parliament? They will overwhelmingly vote with the government, being a conservatively aligned party. They'll stick their head up and they'll get some air time, you know, uh, you know, by articulating certain issues through their prism, which is, you know, we put families first, that's to be expected. Do you think that they're being taken seriously by the government? Um, in the sense that they are, a, they are fellow travellers on the conservative end of, of politics, um, I, I think they're being seen more as an ally than a threat. And what do you think is the possible value of the family impact statements? Um, it's just another lens, another prism through which you can see all government policy. Um, if, if we can look at all policies for the impact that they could potentially have on families, that's a good thing. And do you think that for the Prime Minister to have agreed to family impact statements, that he was making a significant concession or not? No, I just think he was being very pragmatic and a very canny politician. OK. OK. All right, that's good. Now, um, I don't know if there's any... Oh, you know, I mean, yeah, OK. W what is it that, that worried you about this attempted separation between... Uh, the public separation between AOG and the political sure. scene? The claim that uh, the church is keeping itself at arm's length from the political process can't be plausibly sustained when you have somebody who is a pastor preaching from their pulpit on one Sunday and then putting on another hat and saying they're a family first candidate for the Senate the next day, and then going out and saying that suggestions of connections between the party and the church amount to slander. And that's so transparently ridiculous, I think it, it, it brings both the church and the political process into disrepute. And that is, in fact, what happened in some cases? Oh, yes, definitely, in Queensland. OK, that's great. Yeah. That's great. That, that's kind of, Christy, you want more Christians yeah. in politics, yeah. I think. I would love all Christians of conviction to join a political party because the gospel is a, a call to social action as well as a message of salvation. And um, I'd rather see them, though, outwork their faith in a mainstream political party of their choosing rather than to be drawn off into the fringes of politics into a party that has no constitution, no branch structure and big impediments to, to popular appeal. That's a very pragmatic call that you're making, isn't it? Yes, I suppose so. 
and that's what needs to be done. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Can you can you encapsulate for us what you what the AOG churches believe in? The AOG is a a, a mainstream Protestant church. We believe Jesus is our Lord and Saviour, uh, and we believe that those other regular mainstream trappings of the the Old and New Testament. I suppose what we add to that is a contemporary relevance. So we have to meet people in the culture that they're at. And we also believe that if you live your life according to the, uh, you know, the model of Jesus, then you will live a satisfied, fulfilled, maximised life as well. And, and where do the AOG churches stand on issues like creationism, for instance? The AOG is full of closet creationists, but Family First would be very unwise to let that cat out of the bag. But, but in terms of the AOG and the AOG's beliefs and AOG members' beliefs, many of them believe in creationism? Uh, certainly, and unfortunately. So that's not something that you believe in, clearly? No. So when you say that the AOG is part of the mainstream, that would seem to be what we'd call a fundamentalist belief, wouldn't it? But the word fundamentalist has had a number of unfortunate labels attached to it. I mean, in its purest sense, it means you believe in the fundamentals of the Bible. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're a crazy or it's a cult or anything like that. But one of the fundamentals of the Bible is that the world was created in seven days. People would argue that point. <laughs> yes, but, but, but I, 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 would, I would argue that point. <laughs> you would argue that point. I suppose what I'm trying to establish is that, that there is a substantial body of belief inside the AOG that, that would hold to the theory of creationism. Yes, just one other thing for me. Do you believe there's such thing as the religious... To tell you, is there such thing as the religious right in Australia? No, but there will be very soon, and this is the beginning of it. Um, you, you, want, you want to do yeah. that for, as though yeah, we're doing a part of the camera? Yeah, yeah. OK. Mm-hmm. Is, there, is there such a thing as the religious right in this country? No, and I don't know that it, it would be a good thing if there were. People say that if you want to know where Australia will be in ten years, look at where America is now. And the religious right certainly has a vice-like grip on the conservative end of politics in the United States. What's ironic is that um, despite the fact that the religious right has such a grip in the American psyche and American politics, the kind of proselytising that Family First have attempted to do in many churches would be illegal in America. Why is that the case? because there's a clause in their tax code that says that churches have to abstain from any political involvement to maintain their tax-exempt status. And you would like to see that kind of uh, law established here, presumably? Uh, I didn't say that, but I think it's a debate that Australia needs to have. So do you think that Australia is headed the American way as far as religious influence on politics goes? I think it will. the influence will only increase, yes. And that's a bad thing? No, I would like moral people and Christian people to be involved in the political process. I just don't want that to be manipulated by the church. Okay. It's good. It's great. Thank you. I think I'll just have to talk for a moment, but you obviously you can answer me in a minute. You stood for um, local uh, government, obviously, and you have obviously a very um, strong involvement in the sort of social fabric of um, the place and very pronounced views and obviously you're not afraid to um, put your money where your mouth is because as you say the repercussions probably aren't that comfortable although I can't imagine that an organisation that is a Christian based organisation that presumably has the values that you admire would be so narrow as to not be able to deal with such measured criticism. I mean you've staked out your ground for criticism very carefully and, I, you know, I, I think it would be rather disappointing um, if there were consequences for you that were anything other than mild or incidental. But um, I, guess, I guess you can tell us about that mm-hmm. after this first. There's a little bit of uh, conversation between you guys. Yep. Yeah. Well, yep. that's... that's uh, you can't imagine that, but I can. But you can, yes. yeah. Yes. Of course, uh, I go to that church. Um, mm. And... Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. By that well, you mean your particular church rather than... Um, possibly. I mean, you know, I, I can only speak to the, you know, I go to that church. I don't mm. care how well I'm received in other churches. Mm. It's irrelevant to me. Mm. It's, uh, I don't want to saw my own nest. Mm. Mm. 
out of interest, when will this screen? It's been a question we've been asking ourselves. It looks like the end of June, towards mm -hmm. the end Mid -June, of June. And we'll probably yeah. use, and then we'd use, the, the peg would be that, you know, Steve building the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. Goes, so that would be yeah. right. That gives you a hook into it. Yeah. Yeah. I was very keen on Pentecost. So, are you, what are you involved in any sphere of political endeavour at the moment, apart from being a member of the Liberal Party? Uh, I, I was trying to keep my finger in as many pies as I can. Uh, my, my grandfather gave me my my conviction that uh, to be a good citizen, you have to be involved in as many things as you can, and he certainly was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've always, over many years, I've scaled back my commitments just at the moment because mm. I'm raising a family, but over mm. the years it's been the Rural Fire Service, the Red Cross, the Liberal Party, mm, um, okay. you know, various other clubs and associations. Okay, so you have a sense of social service by the sounds of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, not not just as a Christian, but as a, as, a, as a good citizen. I think people need to be involved voluntarily in, in a range of things, in, their in the life of their community. Mm. What did your grandfather do? Um, he ran a movie theatre and a post office. And really? was the president of the local um, progress association Whereabouts? in the castle hall. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you know, I just kind of grew up with him, always bustling out the door to some meeting or another, and it impacted me greatly. Of course, I've always been raised believing you involve yourself in the community. Hmm. You know, um, if you don't, it's like um, if you don't do anything, you've got no right to complain when things go pear shaped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where does the Italian connection go to? That's way, way back, or oh, no, that, the, the, my grandfather that I'm speaking of was mm. on my mum's side. That's third fleet, ah. third fleet Australian. Yes. On dad's side, it's it's Italian. If you go back a few generations, so a few I, generations back. Yeah. I have hybrid vigour. I thought it was going to be cinema paradiso for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Normally call them noddies. Noddies. Strangely enough. <laughs> mm. Very tell, tell me, what is it? What is it like? being in your position where so many people come up to you and feel as though they know you, mm. but of course you don't know them from a bar of soap. Does that give you a slightly surreal life? Mm. I can't tell you, but... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I feel for you and people in your situation because you know, there's that instant recognition, you know, a normal person, when they get that flicker of recognition, they think, oh, you know, that, that must be a friend. I just can't quite recall your name, but you get it from people that you've never mm. ever met. Mm, true. Mm. Can I also say that I think ACA has gone down the tube since you left? It's a lovely man, isn't it? <laughs> lovely. Nothing against Ray. Mm. Nothing against Ray, but oh mm. gosh, it's tabloid now. It's depressing. Different type of okay. Different. Picked at a different demographic. But uh, mm. it'd be nice if they dropped the, the weight loss and the fad diets and the cancer cures and the, mm. the hidden camera exposes and so mm. forth. And I like Sunday. Sunday's always been solid. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Matt, and while we do this, we'll, we'll have to have absolute quiet. Thanks. Yeah. Matt, just the. Um, Won't take long. In the lead up to the last election, Family First, it was said Family First was directly linked to the AOG. Was that true? In the lead-up to the last election, it was said that Family First was directly linked to AOG. Was that true? Uh, from the pulpit, was there support from AOG churches? From the pulpit, was there support from AOG churches? Why do you say dummy candidates? Why do you say dummy candidates? What was the purpose of standing dummy candidates? What was the purpose of standing dummy candidates? So you say that they had candidates to play the preference game. So you said that they had candidates to play the preference game. Uh, why is Family First so intent on claiming there's no connection? Why is Family First so intent on claiming that there is no connection? And the Senate candidate said that was close to slander. And one of the Senate candidates said that that was close to slander. Um, Do you feel that others in the AOG have similar concerns? How sophisticated is Family First? How sophisticated is Family First? Is the 
there such a thing as the religious right in Australia? Is there such a thing as the religious right in Australia? Is there such a thing as the religious right in Australia? It's it's a three G uh, phone. It's a two point five G phone. Do you think the AOG realised that there's a, a potential downside with this connection? Mm -hmm. Do you think that the AOG realises that there is a potential downside with this political connection? Do you think members of the church felt pressure to vote for Family First? Do you think members of the church felt pressure to vote for Family First? Come through my lawn. <laughs> hey, squirt. <laughs> Your grandma's going to have a fit when she sees this. Hey, can you catch? Hey, Lynn. but I'm getting tired. <laughs> Surely that's enough. <laughs> that's the plane that goes to Pine Gap in Alice Springs. Oh, right. I've got no windows along the fuselage, but it's very deep and mysterious. And a big one, no, Mummy, no. a big one. A big one. He used to be afraid of swimming, but now he can't Daddy, get nothing. Daddy, no more. Mom, no more? Okay. No Daddy more? Can. Oh, Daddy can? Yeah. Oh, I'll do it then. All right. Oh. Big one. More big ones. More big ones? Yeah. Ah. More big ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds of this. No, 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 we like the pictures. Oh, well. If it's of my boy, then you have no complaint from me. And uh, 40 years from now, when he inherits my federal seat, you can pluck this out of the archive and... More. <laughs> 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 Oh, <laughs> no. 